And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence. <coughs> good brother Xanatrix, we are back with our journey through Veil of the Void. And after dealing with the minutia for a bit of time, we'll be back to minutia a while later. We're finally handling the class system. It's the section from us you all know and love, where we take each class episode by episode and delve. And, and, um, we, and... As we saw, as we saw with the preview from last week, there's some interesting ones. Indubitably. And for for the first one that we're, now before we get before we even get into that, I, I do want to on to bring up the fact that at the start of the chapter, um, it brings up the th the things that all the classes share in common. I.e., they all start with 12 plus vitality starting HP, and you get one virtue point and an expertise at levels 4, 7, 11, 14, and 17. And, like with some of the other chapters, I like that there is a mini table of contents, which is which is hyperlinked, that mm. ha that ha that has all of the classes and um sub and um specializations. But for our first one, we are dealing with the architect, and there's yes. either there's either a weird <laughs> there's either there's either a weird typo or a Freudian slip. But on one of the pages, architect is spelled with an H. Architect instead of architect. Mm -hmm. And all that I'm reminded of is how, is how. An easy way to start a fight where I'm from is to ask the question: Is it Minnesota? Is is it Minnesota or Minnesota? Mm hmm. Oh, uh, we did have a we we were we did have a bit of a bungle because we forgot that asterisk um abilities that are that are in the book are referred to are 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 unique ones that you're not going to be able to get through swapping because. Something that I f something that I find interesting is that Veil of the Void's attempt at multi-classing or even custom classing has far more in common with the swap-like style of games like D&D Fourth Edition, instead of the typical take um, dipping that we see in uh, that we see in other entries. Mm -hmm. And between you and me, I've never been a fan of the dip concept. You know, take a take a level in blank. Yeah. Largely because it's a lot of extra work for something that's not going to be all that rewarding. And you're bottlenecking your choice. Yes. But with Architect, it opens up that architects are the individuals who bring their ideas to life. They tear apart their surroundings to craft powerful and useful items. Their art comes with a bit of danger. Things are often apt to exploding, though. This does not deter a master craftsman. Technological advancement always comes with its risks. Arch architects know this all too well and take it head on. What are a few explosions if it means the future of all kind? Indeed. And is it... And I will not deny the fact that there's a small part of me that wants um, that wants someone to do fan art of an architect strumming a a acoustic guitar like he's the engineer. <laughs> I could see it. <laughs> and also, and remember, some of the races we've had to deal with have four arms, so it'd be interesting to see that kind that kind of race play a guitar. Play a couple guitars. Mm -hmm. Play a guitar and a bass. Yeah. Davey 504 would approve of one of those things. <laughs> he would approve of both, 
if we called a base and a six strings base. Can, can you sing tenor? Tenor 12 miles away. <laughs> uh. Anyway, for its starting proficiencies, we have one-handed ranged weapons, medium synthetic armor, a crafter's kit, an assimilator device, and an eyeglass <laughs> scanner. So the whole weapons, armor, and tools. Yep, yep. When leveling beyond level 1, you add 1d6 or 3 plus vitality to max HP. And then we have the starting items. A one-handed ranged weapon, synthetic medium armor, an assimilator device, and 200 scrap. Um, 5d6 times 1,000 SC. Standard or, credits. Yep. And one bonus level in crafting and mechanics. Very nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I actually really like to see here that they have all of the abilities uh, in a table mm -hmm. of, of, the, of the abilities that the architect or architect mm -hmm. gets. Um, it has all of the abilities that are unique, marked with the asterisk, like we said earlier. So those are the ones that are wholly the architects and the architects alone. And it even has page numbers next to the next section that holds these... Uh, particular abilities. That's actually a really nice looking table. I like it. Yeah. I know some will look at it and, and make comparisons to the to the class tables we see in D&D, &D, but the problem that I always had with those class tables is that sometimes you could have a class that, had, that has a lot of features, and you'd have to go digging around to find that one feature that you need. Mm. Because... And admittedly, this is a this is a nitpick of mine. Um, features are features were not um, were not presented alphabetically. Yeah, they were presented in the order that you got them, and in some books that didn't have an index, that pr that made things even worse. So it yeah. became a pain in the ass when I needed to look for a specific item. But I'm looking for items in certain books. Hmm. Why am I reminded of pain? Why does my mouth taste like pennies? But the innate ability that you get is scrap. Scrap can be found. Well, ra or rather, I'd, this isn't an ability. It's more of a reflection of of something that's going to be important to abilities. Scrap can be yeah. found from mechanical adversary drops. And from crafting slash mechanics checks used to dismantle premium metal that surrounds them, for instance, ships. Average cra average crafting mechanics checks give twenty scrap. Every additional difficulty level past average gives ten more. Prototypes may use this on themselves, however, it will reduce their max HP by ten percent every time they could they could and they sorry ha huh, every time and could cause long lasting effects. To return the max HP, they must perform a hard mechanics check during a long rest. You can hold up to 100 times your vitality in scrap. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of a prototype using the <laughs> using this to scra to scrap to make it to make to make more stuff um, is instantly amusing to me. It's amusing, and I think the other part of it that's actually really interesting is that that implies that in a like in a very bad situation where you absolutely need that scrap, you could use yourself just in case. Yeah, so that would be an interesting thing for a prototype to do in some sort of emergency situation. Mm -hmm. oh, but at level one, you get scraps of creation. The assimilator device absorbs and holds scrap. As a channel action, you may draw a blueprint for an invention. When built, 
use your action to materialize it in a square adjacent to you. What you invent is fairly open-ended, though all creations must be manually controlled and cannot be exact copies of other items. Example, you cannot use scrap to create an exact copy of a key. As such, you cannot create AI units or automatic items. Items may be activated on your turn as an extra action, and you may only have four medium objects, one large object, and six minuscule slash small items at one time. If you create beyond this limit, one item you choose would be dismantled. Every build, bo every build below large requires an average crafting check. Um, large requires a hard check. On a critical failure, it explodes, dealing 2d6 force, da force and fire damage to all beings in a 5x5 five five area centered on you. Oh. I'd say I'd say this is less of the this is we do have a bit of the engineer with the whole scrap management thing. Oh. But what I'm being reminded of is Kang the Mad. Kind of, yeah. He makes things fly and he makes things explode. The things that fly tend to survive. The things that explode, not so much. Yes. But then, <laughs> then we get into a what what each of these size categories would be would count under. Yep. So minuscule things like lockpicks or a pistol bullet um, cost five scrap. Small and take one one action to form. It looks like um, small items are things like a blank credit chip, a card, an info tablet, ammo clips, etc. These cost twenty five scrap and are eight. Um, and are a channel one action. Um, medium are things like large traps, turrets, rifles, and small robotics. And the, these take 50 to 100 scrap, depending on the complexity. In combat, they require two channel stages. Out of combat, they take 5 to 10 minutes to craft. Large, uh, large items are unmanned 4 to 6 feet medium-sized mechs, Large weapons, example rocket launchers, etc. They take 300 scrap to craft. In combat, they take four channel stages. Out of combat, they take up to 20 minutes. The idea of of somebody building a freaking mech in a firefight is very amusing to me. Amusing, but uh, it looks like it'd probably be pretty impractical. Four channel stages is a long time to be vulnerable. Well, it falls to everybody else to protect them in that case. True. But that's only if you've decided that the mech is the way to go. <laughs> Let's be honest, we given given some of the dumb things we've seen engine we've seen engineers do in real life and and on YouTube, um, would that be any surprise? No. There's a reason why I always give engineers the side eye whenever I, whenever they're playing D&D. Yep. Once again, never allow an engineer to create an arrow that allows a portable hole and a bag of holding to combine. Um, the other ability you get at level 1 is Artificer's Blast. As a reaction after an attack, you may overpower your weapon by expending 2 scrap. If you do, you instantly deal 1d6 pure damage to your target. This has a three-round cooldown. P plus 1d6, so that implies that you have to uh, you have to hit. Mm -hmm. And once again, I'm being. I believe that the I believe that there was a unlockable engineer shotgun that that um. Did you that used your scrap as ammo, and you would get scrap back every time you hit? I think so. I'd have to go look up the TF2 wiki, and I'm not willing to do that right now. Mm -hmm. um, at level t at second level, you gain Botatronics. <laughs> as an action, you may summon one of three bots. They follow you around until dismissed or killed. If dismissed or killed, they go into a five-round cooldown. They have 10 HP and 6 squares of movement. Only one bot may be summoned at a time. Bots cost 20 scrap and require an average mechanics check to summon. 
So we either have the Forgetron. When this bot is in play, you may build items underneath the bot or in an adjacent square. It will automatically attract scrap within a 7x7 seven seven area, adding it to your pool. While this bot is active, you may reroll one single result on your crafting mechanics checks for the scraps of creation ability. A single one result, yeah, Monk. You may reroll one, a single a single crit fail. Mm. Well, not crit fail, but a single failed die. Um, the Soothatron. When it's in play, you may attach it to an allied unit and heal them by 10% of their max HP per round, up to three times per long rest. As an action, overcharge this bot to immediately heal the attached unit and all adjacent allies' HP by 10% of their max. The bot must then be moved to another ally and cannot be moved until dismissed or overcharged again for round cooldown. Hmm, interesting. You either just put it on your on your meat shield and, you know, heal them for 10% max HP per round, uh, up to three times per long rest... Or you can, I guess, I guess that's how many times you can make that and per long rest and put it on somebody. Mm -hmm. And then you, uh, but the overcharge is like immediately popping it, but healing everybody by ten percent of their max. Yep. Nice. And then we have the Imperatron. This bot guards a this bot guards a five by five area centered on it. Any adversary that starts or ends their turn in this area must perform a contested mentality check. On a failure, they take your level in electrical damage and reduce their movement by two squares. <laughs> and remember, I'm in the, I, <laughs> I'm in a 5x5 five five square that this bot is around. If I don't make that check, zap! That's pretty good. <laughs> It's, and, of course, at every even level, you get one skill point. At level three, you get mechanical understanding. Gain a basic understanding of prototypes and general mechanics. When repairing mechanized units, add your mentality to the healing total. This is also, I would say, the first example of one of the non-unique skills. Um, this is one of those skills that you could, in another class, choose to swap for. Yeah. So that's that could be useful to some other stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll see as we get into other classes. Yeah, I could easily see the combat me combat medic taking it if it if need be. Yeah, if you have a lot of prototypes prototypes on your team, or if you have just maybe even just one prototype, and you really want to be that the super healer that does all the healing, this would be a good way to do it. Yep. So after that is at level three, you gain mechanical understanding. Gain a basic understanding of prototypes and general mechanics. Didn't wait, we just say this one? Wait, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. What the hell am I saying? At level four, you gain advancement training. You gain one virtue point and an expertise. You also gain Teletron. When active, when when activated on your turn, you may move your bot up to eight squares. As an extra action, you may activate the Teletron and swap your current position with it. If adjacent to an adversary during the swap, they may perform a reaction strike. The tel the Teletron spawns with three charges. After the third is spent, the Teletron is dismantled and cannot be summoned for another five rounds. I'm guessing that by the name, it's an addition to Botatronics. Yeah. Um, all, that but that ba all that this basically does is let you swap places with your bot. Well, yeah. Uh, the I mean, like, each of the bots has a specific use. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm guessing that this is part of Botatronics, though it might be. This might me want to be a little more clear about that. I would assume it just because of the name. Mm -hmm. um, but this is kind of cool. Like, you have a, a mobile teleporter, Monk. Yes, you do, and also you can probably be a di you can probably be a dick with the Imperatron. Well, you can only have one bot out at a time. Remember. Um, but I could see, like, it says that if if this is adjacent to an adversary during the swap, they may perform a reaction strike. I wonder if that works the other way around. If you're adjacent to a, a 
a uh, an adversary and you teleport to an empty square and bring the te- the teletron there, is it now open to a retali- a retaliation or a reaction strike? Probably is. Huh. That'd be pretty interesting. I mean, they only have 10 HP, so... Mm-hmm. Um, at level 5, you gain specialization. So... For so for those for those for those with um cer- with um easy tastes in games, this is y- this is your subclass. And the three op- the three options that they have are technician, spec tech, and tinkerer, which we'll get into later. Yep. At level six, you gain mechanical smarts, a plus one bonus level two mechanic skill. You also gain mass repair. Once per day, you may perform a average mechanics check on either a ship, mech, or up to three human-sized machines, including prototype. Medium-sized machines. Yeah, medium. If you succeed, instantly repair them to half HP. On a, and that's not too that's not too shabby for a average check. Yeah, and again, these are uh, these level six bonuses are not hit with an asterisk. So these are again things you can swap with. That's pretty. F- that's pretty fucking cool. Yep. So at le- at seventh level, you gain advancement training, um, one virtue point and an expertise. And further and for the record, any any time that it mentions advancement training from here on, I'm gonna skip that because it's the same thing. It's your. It's um. Yeah, it's your ASI, except better, because it's. One ed, one attribute and one feat. Mm-hmm. That's autom- fucking cool. Which automatically makes it better. Yes. Um, That's fucking cool. You also gain pocket loader. You craft a pocket loader. This small item attaches to your side and will automatically reload and unjam your weapons. You may choose one weapon. This weapon does not use a rearm action to switch to. Holy fuck! <laughs> Like this isn't this isn't quite a what the fuck moment because it's not like completely OP broken, mm-hmm. but that's just so useful. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. And I mean, it's architect, it's architect uh, specific. It's got the asterisk, but still, you, as an architect, you use one-handed ranged weapons. That's 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 your proficiency. You got you know. Some kick-ass sidearm of some sort, attaching this motherfucker to it, and you're good to go. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Um, of course, that's not discounting the fact that we may end up encountering expertises where you can expand those proficiencies. Yeah, and of course, uh, if you choose to use, what, two-handed range weapons and become a sniper architect? Mm-hmm. A sniper rifle that unjams automatically? Most sniper rifles don't jam normally, especially if they're bolt action. But still, yeah, but, it, but it it reloads automatically. That too. Or you you know what would be even worse? A architect with a rocket launcher. <laughs> I don't think rocket launchers can jam, but reload. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. At level 8, you gain Spark of Brilliance. Once per short rest when you fail a mentality check, you may re-roll the failed check with two auto-hits. Very nice. At level 9, you gain Helping Hand. This attaches a robotic arm on you or your armor. This robotic arm grants you another action to use in your main phase. This action may be used for anything such as planning with your assimilator device, Firing a weapon or anything else your normal hand would be able to do, excluding arcanting. It cannot be used more than once per round and cannot perform dual wielding. So okay, we've, we've gone past en- we've gone past engineer. Now we're at tech priest. Well, even better, even better, monk. This is a tech priest that should he want to, uh, can use magic because he can have the the tech arm doing everything but magic, and then his own hands. Doing magic, especially if, especially if he decides to give that extra arm his gun. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you, 
And if you try and get any closer, well, you'll just be easier to hit with this giant lightning bolt I'm going to shove down your face. <laughs> At level 10, you gain more abilities in your chosen specialization. At level 11, you gain advancement training and... you oh, Just advancement training. At level 12, you gain hypnotic flash. Your optical scanners are, are for more than just show. By overcharging your scanner and releasing the energy in a four-square cone... You force any adversary in the area to make a contested analysis check. On a failure, they are inflicted with the blind condition for one round, three round cooldown. Now we've gone beyond tech priest to uh, Z fighters. <laughs> it's fucking solar flare. Yes. Um. Although, although given, although given everything, could you say that? Could you say that this flash is a, is an instance of? Blinding me with science. She blinded me with science. <laughs> she blinded me with science! <laughs> um, at level 13, you gain back to the drawing board. Jeez, why does that sound familiar? Cause, because, Marty, we're going back to the future! <laughs> Once every four rounds, when you fail an attack, you may instead re-roll the attack using your mentality virtue. If you are attacking with a weapon that does not grant any additional bonus dice or auto hits, then you gain one bonus die for this attack. Nice. I I'd also like to know. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I was gonna say that it's it's a nice little um, fail forward. It is. I like um. I like that both level twelve and level thirteen, the hypnotic flash and the back to the drawing board, are uh, more swap skills. Hypnotic Flash can go on anyone who has the goggles. Or the scanner, or whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. However you flavor them. So if you really want it to be Solar Flare, you can. Solar Flare! With sunglasses. <laughs> You're wearing some kick-ass sunglasses at night. Hmm. Nope, not doing it. <laughs> I guess I'm just the uh, the troubadour of our troop. <laughs> At level 14, advancement training again. At level 15, specialization. At level 16, quick build. When building items, you cut the build time in half. When drawing plans, it takes you one less channel action to a minimum of one. Of one action? Yeah, of one action. Um, and let me, ch let me check the... So for that, so for that mech, for that mech, that would only take two channel stages or ten minutes. Well, and remember, you also cut in time the the cut in half the drawing uh, time as well. Mm -hmm. And let me see, let me uh, see where it was for the draw drawing time. Oh, that! Oh, it's just a ch it's just a channel action. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then we get unstable construction. You rapidly put together a weapon as an extra action and twenty scrap. This weapon will be either a melee or ranged weapon based on what range of combat you are in. This weapon gets one attack that inflicts your level plus mentality and force damage. The attack is made with either finesse or mentality. After the attack, roll 1d6. On a 2 to 5, the weapon dismantles and returns half the scrap used. On a 6, this weapon gains an additional attack that may that you may use before dismantling. On a 1, the weapon explodes, inflicting 10% of your max HP and force damage to all beings in a 5x5 five five area, and 5 scrap is returned. Imagine if a... Uh... If if an if an architect here is uh planning to try and game that little one by putting in some defenses for force damage, <laughs> I'm just gonna soak that ten percent of my max HP and take no damage while everybody else around me gets hurt. I only get five of the scrap instead of ten of the scrap because it was twenty scrap and it's a quarter instead of a half now, but it's worth the extra damage. 
Um, at 17, you gain advancement training. At 18, you gain recovering scrapaholic. Your creations, when dismantled by you, now return 50% of the scrap used in its creation. Ooh, that's useful. So that'd mean that the unstable construction, if everything goes as planned, you're getting ten, you're getting ten scrapped from it. Well, you're all, you're already getting ten scrap ten scrap on the two to five result. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that this means that you choose to dismantle it rather than the weapon just falls apart, which is what's in, implied by by the unstable construction. Yep. Template. At level ni at nineteenth, you gain dodge tech. You have if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Yep. If you can dodge traffic, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> you have crafted a small implant that slightly improves your reflexes. Twice per combat, you may automatically dodge one ranged attack that would hit you gain plus one bonus level in dodge. Mm -hmm. And at level 20, you gain your you gain um, your final bit of specialization as well as your ultimate, known as Master Engineer. Your mastery over the strands of creation is second to none. You gain a permanent plus one in mentality. This may bring you above nine. All vehicles you have access to gain plus six squares of movement. You may overcharge your assimilator device to gain control of a vehicle. To do so, choose a target within seven squares of you or your Forgetron and expend 150 scrap. If there is no one controlling the vehicle, you immediately gain control over it. However, if there is a controlling force, you must perform a contested programming check. On success, you gain control of the device. The control lasts for five rounds and may be used once per long rest. See, this That's is the kind of this is cool. the kind of ability that I can that I can justify the once per long rest thing we saw way too much in um, five E N and level up. Yeah, but beyond that, this is just a really fucking cool capstone. Like this is such a cool capstone. Especially since imagine how funny it is if you if you're dealing with some you're dealing with the b bag who's decided to break out his own personal version of say the proud clod i'm gonna take it over now <laughs> ha 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 contested programming my mentality is above nine bitch mm -hmm. mentality plus programming oh i'm sorry fuck you all my dice say you're dead oh no <laughs> grab him out of his own cockpit and smash him with it like like thor with loki or like the hulk with loki excuse me I, I wouldn't I wouldn't smash it. I do I would end up doing um my favorite sport. Compet Hitting a motherfucker with another motherfucker? Nope. Competitive bitch tossing. Is that like caber tossing but easier? Yes. <laughs> okay. So now we get into the uh specializations. Mm -hmm. And the first one is spec tech. The spec tech is a study of the unique creations of bots. The aim is to improve their functionality and abilities. Those that study in this field learn how to better protect, sorry, not protect, predict adversary movements. You have created an add-on to your assimilator that allows you to combine both focuses into one to gain you true control of the battle flow. Nice. And... First, we have their level 5 abilities. The first one is Command Bot. The biggest problem was figuring out how to have the assimilator control multiple bots at once. Thankfully, you came up with a better solution. This bot functions as a command hub for the bots, consumes 100 scrap to summon, and counts towards your medium limit. And then While command, command Bot is in play, mm -hmm. you get Commandatron. While this bot is in play, you may have two Botatronics on the field at the same time. They respawn in three rounds instead of five in combat. Instead of moving on your turn, you may move all controlled bots their full movement. You may use your action and 20 scrap to allow an ally that is within eight squares of the command bot to move up to two times their base movement. 
damn. Yeah, that is nice. And and even if you like, even if you choose not to move on your turn and move all controlled bots to their full movement, mm -hmm. if one of your controlled bots is Teletron, I mean. Is that is it, is, it, is you're gonna still be able to move by teleporting yourself? Well, I I think if, at level five, I think te I think Teletron would um. It is the impl the implication is that it seems it would be applicable for all of your bots. Just normal, it's just normally, um, it's assuming you're only you only have one bot, whereas with this you've obviously got more. Hmm. Um. At level 10, you gain Manipulation Wave. You may target an adversary within six squares of you or your Commandatron. The adversary must then perform a contested mentality check. On a failure, you may move the adversary half their movement or prevent one extra action. On a success, the adversary rolls with an additional plus two bonus dice against any future Manipulation Wave tests. Four round cooldown. Nice. So it's it it's good, but there's but there's a catch if you fuck up. Mm -hmm. At level fifteen, you gain Teletron 2.0. You may treat your Teletron as if it is an additional bot to summon from your Botatronics list. It now has one charge on the Teletron that recharges once every two rounds. You may sacrifice half your movement instead of an extra action to swap with the Teletron. You may use the char you may use the charge to swap another ally within 15 squares of the bot as a reaction. So this answers my question from earlier. Teletron is not actually a bot included in Botatronics. Hmm. It's its own separate bot. Interesting. See, and then improved Botatronics. Your bots no longer require scrap to summon, respawn in two rounds, and may all be spawned on the same field at one time. Yeah, that's a level twenty spec for sure. <laughs> like if you if you're going level twenty in, in <laughs> if you're going level twenty in spec tech, yeah, that's that again. Just like the main capstone of master engineer, that's fucking busted. Mm -hmm. That that's <laughs> my bots don't require scrap anymore. What? <laughs> Are you just summoning them from thin fucking air? Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, I am get once again. I'm getting flashbacks to the war to the four E warlord. Mm hmm. So that's basically what this is. The the architect as a bat as a battlefield manipulator. Oh. Yep. So next we have the technician. Technicians specialize in the use of cybernetics and vehicles. By choosing to advance in the study, you begin to see the inner workings and functioning of all large machines. You watch as the threads of creation flow throughout your work. You've updated your assimilator with a new add-on that allows it to create bigger and better creations. Ooh. At level 5, you gain improved creation. The improvements to your assimilator have gone off without a hitch. This update allows you to produce larger units and machines. You can now store an additional 800 scrap and receive plus 10 scrap from successful scrap checks. So, re remember that you could hold up to 100 times your vitality in scrap. This just puts 800 on top of that. Mm -hmm. At level 5, that's going to be a lot. That's going to be a lot. Of, that's a lot. You're going to be a pack rat with scrap. <laughs> Let's just hope you're not Skaven. Mm -hmm. Oh. So then you you again you also you can produce bigger ones and the bigger ones are vehicles. So you can create large vehicles and mechs. It takes a minimum of 8 hours to build, 700 scrap, and requires 3 successful hard mechanics crafting checks. This can craft a fighter-sized ship or mech that can hold up to 2 individuals. You may add greater effects to the vehicle for an additional 150 scrap in the forms of extra hull armor, warp drives, improved weapons, etc. You may only have one vehicle at a time. 
I'm just gonna make me an X-wing. Bye. <laughs> or somebody... it's a fighter-sized ship. Yeah. Just make it just MacGyver an X-wing to get yourself off planet. Yeah. 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 At level ten, you get you gain minor cybernetics. Technician. So we're really going into the into the, into the uh, tech priest now. Technicians re understand the lim the limits of mortal work as well as the benefits of cybernetics. Choose two of the below implements or discuss different ones with your GM. You gain an additional one at level fifteen. So we have active stealth upgrade. When not in combat, you may enable covert at will without a without a check and not adding to the skill rules. And are in covert with four hits. In combat, you roll with plus one auto hit die when attempting to covert. Nice. Cybernetic eye. Your passive observation is increased by one level. You may re-roll a one result during an attack. That's... There's no limit on that, mm -hmm. monk. Any attack, re-roll a one. Yep. Auto Fuck. Auto Shielder, you have a shield built into your skin that gives you four energy shield points. Leg Servos, you have plus four squares of extra movement. Uh, night Vision, you can see in all darkness as if it were light. Connector Device, you roll with plus one auto hit on programming checks if you can stand within two squares of what you are programming. And power legs, you gain one balance. You gain one bonus level in either balance or muscle. A few of these are huh. a few of these are numbers go up, and a few others are <laughs> what the fuck. I don't think any of these are actually just numbers go up. These they're all like power legs, a bonus level in balance or muscle. Those are th that's not just number go up because balance or muscle can be used for numerous things. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the same issue of numbers go up with you know normal skills in D and D five e, <clears throat> and uh, but other things are like four extra squares of movement sounds like numbers go up, but that's a tactical advantage. That's a huge tactical advantage. All, all of this is functional. It also means that you can, um, you can, the that extra bit of movement. That also means that you that you can do even that you can do some interesting fuckery with your bots, especially with teleportation. But just imagine, imagine a, because your bots' movements are smaller. You could actually be a frontline skirmisher waiting for your bots to come and and, and uh, back you up a little bit. <laughs> if you wanted to use that leg movement stuff. It's a nice answer to the question of you and what army. <laughs> this army, asshole. Mm -hmm. So, at level fifteen, in addition to getting a th in addition to getting a third cybernetic, you gain. Self-destruction protocol. While you may not always need the red button, it's nice to have it just in case. You may activate this to cause one of your creations to instantly explode. If you do, it does a set amount of force damage based on its size. Minuscule 5, small 10, medium 15, large 35, vehicle 80. It This damages everything within three squares. Beings within the blast radius may perform a hard dodge check to take half damage. Imagine if you were creating ammo clips for yourself with the small. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, this clip's out. Grenade! <laughs> Frag out. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. That would small. That would only be ten. That would don't. That would be ten damage. With a, with but a ten damage, ten damage in a three square radius, mm -hmm. and also, you know, all the other damage you may have done while shooting at stuff. Yep. Or um, say if you say if your if your um, if that X wing you had earlier ends up ends up going down, but you managed to get out. 
Well, you just you just laid one you just laid one very easy trap. X-wing down. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> oh. And at level 20, you gain Master of the Craft. You reduce all needed needed mechanical scrap in half. All things crafted have plus two HP and now come with an additional clip of ammo. All things crafted have two times two HP. Two times HP. <laughs> plus two HP? No, monk. No. It's double HP. <laughs> yeah. So your bots would have your bots would have twenty HP. Those are some beefy boys. Beefy boys. Mm -hmm. Oh. The third specialization we have is Tinkerer. The Tinkerer is focused on the improvement of others' items and creations. They simply take what others have made and make them better. After all, not everyone can make things as well as you. And the first thing that we get from them is Tinkerer's Wrench. Tinkerers have a techno wrench that allows them to perform their modification abilities. They may use this wrench as a channel action with a three round cooldown. When you perform this action, select one of the abilities below or describe a small effect you would like to try to do. These effects last two rounds unless it states unless it states otherwise, and may only target another ally. So we have armor tinkering. Enhance the ally's armor. When the ally is a target of an attack, the attacker rolls with one less bonus die. Drive tinkering. This takes two rounds of channeling. After the channel, the, ally, the allied ship you are on may activate warp slash jump at a difficulty lower, minimum of easy. So there's your there's your Scotty one. I'm giving her all she got, Captain. <laughs> um, Enviro suit tinkering. Your ally may survive for an extra thirty minutes within deep space. The void or other area in which the enviro, enviro suit is active. Improved engines. This ability takes two rounds of channeling. After the channel, the targeted ally vehicle moves at double speed. Anybody remember Redline? Yes, I have it on my computer right now. Because mm -hmm. that's what I'm. Th that's what comes to mind here. Just remember, don't throw the little thingy in the other thingy, or your or your car is gonna blow up in the end. Mm -hmm. Oh, Let's see. Then we have modified servos. An ally gains plus two squares of max movement and is treated as having plus one bonus level in dodge. Oh. quick reload improvement. The targeted ally's weapon does not need to perform a rearm or reload action while activated. Quick reprogram, you target yourself and are treated as having plus one bonus level in programming for the duration. Reprogrammed energy shield, you quickly shift the effects of a shield. Now when the ally takes damage, the attacker takes the energy shield points in electrical damage. It'd be funny as hell if, it was, if instead of electrical it was explosive. My shields explode you. I'm All the fucking invincible. <laughs> no, no, monk, you didn't say it right. It's <laughs> I'm fucking invincible. <laughs> and weapon tinkering enhance the effects of an ally's weapon, allowing them to roll with plus one bonus die on their weapon attacks. And. It's not like unlike some of the other, unlike some of the other um, features that we've seen. This isn't a case where you have to pick from this list. When you activate Tinkerer's wrench, those those type those types of tinkering, you have access to all of them, which I like. Yep, you just choose one, or you even describe a small effect. Mm -hmm. Oh, then you ha you also gain explosive miscalculation. After tinkering with an item, roll 2d6. On double one results, the item you messed with releases an explosive spark dealing 2d6 electrical damage to all beings within a 5x5 five five area.
So tinkering is risk and reward. Mm -hmm. Nice. At, then we get to the level. T then we get to the level ten features. First is percussive maintenance. Everybody's familiar with this one. As if you've ever hit, if you've ever hit a VCR when trying to get a tape to play, that's percussive maintenance. Mm -hmm. As an action, you may target another ally and smack them with your tinkerer's wrench. If they are mechanically based or have cybernetics, they are healed for 10% of their max HP. Jesus Christ, what? <laughs> I will beat the shit. I will beat the health back into you. I'll beat the devil out of you. Literally. <laughs> You'll be healthier when I'm done. <laughs> um. Pro a prototype on your team. Let's... Let's say you've got a this guy, whoever he is, as an architect, and then a prototype that's your that's your main tank. This guy just sits behind him. Be healed, damn you! <laughs> you also gain at level ten hacking strike. As an attack action, once per short rest, target a mechanically based adversary and attack the target with your tinkerer's wrench. On a success, you upload a small virus into their system. This virus shuts down just the target just down the target for one round. Okay, Tinker is busted. <laughs> this is what they get at level fucking ten. Tinker is <laughs> busted. At level fifteen, you gain I meant to do that. When you roll three of a kind of either three or four during a failed programming check, you're given an advantageous failure. Nice. You all you also gain the Tinkerer's Creations. You may build a unique item to always keep with you. Choose from the list below or work with the GM to create your own. The first is the Tinker's Bag. This is a medium-sized bag capable of holding up to 10 medium-sized items. It's a bag of holding. Nothing can be removed from this bag unless the owner removes it. Oh, the Helper. This is a small robotic creature that follows the owner around and assists them as needed. This creature can perform basic actions and is equipped with a small version of the techno wrench. If the owner of this if the owner of this helper is a tinkerer, as an extra action once per short rest, the helper may perform a weaker version of the tinkering abilities. These abilities last for one round with a sixth round cooldown. If the owner of this helper is a tinkerer, but aren't you the tinkerer creating this, so it's always going to be the owner of this helper is a tinkerer? Yeah, that's weird. Wait, no, oh, oh, shit, no, hold on. This specialization is not a unique one to the architect. It doesn't have an asterisk. No, it doesn't. Technician did, but this one doesn't, so... Technician and spec tech did. Mm-hmm. So you, holy fuck, you could take the Tinkerer's Creations as a level 15 spec and get a helper, even if you aren't a Tinkerer. That's fucking cool. <laughs> and the third option, Tinker's Glasses. These glasses act just like eye scanners except for an additional effect. It grants an auto-hit die on programming checks and allows you to heal an allied mechanical unit by an additional plus 5 HP. Nice. Um, I do have to say the level 20 spec, though, Monk. Yeah, you... Yeah, we have to embrace <clears throat> the meme. Keikaku <laughs> DORI! Translation note, Keikaku means plan. Well, that, that'd 20... be just as Keikaku, yeah. Level, tw level 20 spec, all according to plan. You may re-roll a failed programming check an additional time in the same round once every four rounds. If the explosive miscalculation ability activates, you may instead redirect it through you, through you towards a target within 10 squares of you. That target takes 4d6 plus mentality in force damage and is stunned. You take 1d6 force damage and are stunned. Keikaku Dori indeed. Another another variation of the meme, um, if I didn't want to invoke uh, 
light Yagami is to instead invoke a, an indecisive mollusk. Oh, yo, 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 just as planned. Ah, <laughs> uh, Zinch. Hey, that splash art there mm -hmm. at the end of, of Tinker, I think that's the Tinker's helper. Yep. Tiny little guy with a tiny little wrench. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's fucking cool. So the vibe, that, the vibe that I very much get with the, with the architect is that their their approach is, we are we are, ge we are geniuses, we are geniuses with me with mechanics, but we're, but we don't exactly believe in OSHA. OSHA saves the stupid too many times a year anyway. Because <laughs> there's a lot of there's, I've mentioned I've made it clear over the years that one thing I very much love. Are, abil are abilities that are that could that are very powerful but very da but very dangerous to the enemy and the user. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a lot of those here. Oh yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of this is really powerful, but it might blow up in your face, literally. Good shit. I like it. Um, I'd say I'd say some, but I'd say whoever is playing this, they're going to be living and dying on. Um, scrap management because the way that it's set up is very clear that you could burn through scrap pretty quickly if you're not careful. Especially get considering that you have to make a check to get scrap. Mm -hmm. And something that I. I, something else that I find kind of amusing is because of the whole advancement training, a character who hits the capstone, they are going to have um, at at least, barring up barring other factors, um, five expertises. Yeah, and while we haven't looked at the expertises and won't be until after the classes, um, that could be that that's a huge amount of customization. No two architects are going to feel alike. Yeah. <laughs> So we've mentioned that the ba the basic is basic is scrap daddy with so with some helpers. I'd say, um, te I'd say spec t I'd say um, spec tech is for those who want more bots in their bot manipulator class. We put bots in your bots because we heard you like to bot while you bot. Mm -hmm. Um, techni technicians are technicians are for the are are. For those, for those who want to be more mechanicus, they want to make the big things, mm -hmm. and they want to be less uh, squishy meat sack. Yeah, and and tinkerer is, I'd say, the high roller. <laughs> no, tinkerer is the person you mentioned at the very beginning. It's Kang the Mad. <laughs> yes, it, given even it's how explosive. absolutely. Given how explosions tend to factor into it, yes. King the Mad, an inventor who just fucked around with shit, and they flew or they exploded. And if it if it survive if it didn't survive, well, back to the drawing board. Exactly. I I'm glad that I caught that Tinkerer didn't have the asterisk because mm -hmm. that means that specs from Tinkerer can be swapped, which is frankly um, insane. I forgot that <laughs> there were specs that could be swapped, because Jesus Christ! This also this does <laughs> this also means that you could have say, you could have say a once once again a field medic who it who has tinkerer. Yeah, you could have you could have a combat medic that takes some tinkerer uh, specs. Mm -hmm. Um, something like fucking percussive maintenance. <laughs> yeah. But for for our first for our first look at the class design, um, I'd say that I'd say this is fairly promising to what we're going to be dealing with, since, well, you know how you know how last week I was hesitant about whether or not the whether or not this game would be able to live up to the whole you can make just about anything um, mm -hmm. approach. It was already on its last legs by the time that episode was done. That that skepticism is dead. 
<laughs> because I because just with just with this just with this class alone. First off, some of the all I think all of the capstones are on some level ridiculous. They're fucking broke. They're busted. Although, I mean, you, you've got you've got the the master engineer capstone at base, mm -hmm. which you know you get more squares of movement in vehicles. You get plus one to a virtue. You get uh, to overcharge your assimilar, uh, assimilator device in order to take over vehicles. Uh, spec tech, you, you get the the improved botatronics, which makes your bots cost nothing mm -hmm. in scrap. It's fucking what? They respawn in two rounds, and they can all be spawned on the field at one time. Uh, technician gets the the ability to just craft everything for using less scrap. Everything has double HP and additional ammo. And then, of course, the tinkerer takes its its fail mechanic, or at least its uh its unexpected. Um, results of tinkering mechanic, and then turn it into a goddamn weapon, mm -hmm. and also rerolling programming checks every additional time in the same round once for every four rounds. Yeah, because a big problem a big problem that can happen with a with a engine with a engineer or engineer adjacent type of archetype is them being extremely specialized. Mm -hmm. I.e., they're only at their best when you're dealing with mechanical enemies. Which is an assumption that is not a good thing to make for your for your GM. It goes back to that whole thing of something only being useful when the GM builds around it, which mm -hmm. which is the exact opposite of how that should work. Mm -hmm. With the with these with the architect that we're see that we are seeing. What I what I like is that even even if you're fighting non tech non tech things, there's still plenty of stuff that the architect can do, and this even though this is very much a support class, this is not a hang hang back hang back and hang back and be the bot kind of support class like the he, like the heal bots back in the day. Yeah, this is this is a class that does get interactive. I like it. Now. So with with that with that in mind, I think I think the if this is if this is the um, benchmark for what the rest of the classes are going to be like, especially some of the some of the big, some of the classes with more pages like the casters, I think we're in for some interesting times. Yeah, and uh, side note there, looking at the casters, this this architect is only what five pages. Let's <sighs> let me see here. So. It I'm counting I'm counting where it starts with the actual rules. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Yep, five pages. Yeah. Whereas what we've seen, looking at the uh, the chapter five um, internal contents page, because chapter five does have its own contents page. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh. Most the, the casters are about, on average, double this. Mm -hmm. Eight, nine, and eleven. That averages out to about, you know, ten, ish. And because of that, it's going it's going to be very in it's going to be very interesting getting to those casters. Um, I'm always worried when it comes to casters in fantasy games because. There, because some because there's the temptation to give them a shitload of spells, and end up, and end up eating a whole lot of page count. I'm I'm kind of wondering if these casters are gonna work, uh, a little like the um some of the casting specializations that we saw in Heavens and Heresies. If the spec is gonna give you, you know, the the focus and motivation for your caster i i could certainly see i could certainly see that now next week i know i know this was a short one but again five pages worth um next week we'll be doing the combat medic so it'll be interest it'll be interesting to see what spins we have with the medic concept 
Since more often than not, like I said, heal bot. But but different game, different rules here. So that's something to, to certainly look forward to. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>